We're live now. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, depending on where you are. Good afternoon, good evening. If you're here with me in New York, I'm in Brooklyn, bed style, old school do or die, not this new version of gentrification. I think it's called Stuyvesant Heights. I still call it bed style. And just to give you a little bit about me before I jump in, I am happy to MC with you this evening. My colleague Anel and I will be tag teaming. And I want you to know how proud and pleased we are that of all the places you could be, you chose to be here with us this evening. I mean, we think we have something pretty special to share with you, but the fact that you're here is already, you're on the right foot, you are in the right place. And I'm just going to share a little bit about my background because I love my story as it relates to the foundation in particular. And so the quick and dirty is, started my relationship with the foundation more than 10 years ago as a mentor of four fellows. So I had an opportunity to fall in love with the students in the program because they just show up a certain way. There's a certain juge that Emma's have, and, and we'll get to that and you'll understand. And so I had an opportunity to see four of them up close and personal, and we had a great relationship. And then my manager and mentor at HBO, who I loved and adored because he was very much a sponsor for me, he helped me navigate my career, which is what you all wanna have, mentors and sponsors. He said to me, Nikki, where I go, you go. And as I move up the food chain, you will move up the food chain. And at the point that he had received like the ultimate promotion, he said to me, as I'm promoting you, I know I'm going to give you my board seat with an organization that I value. And in the end, it was the Emma Bowen Foundation. And he had been on the board for about 10 years. He gifted me his board seat, which was an honor. And then I started with the former CEO and president, Dr. Rasan Harris. And so he and I, you could say, grew up together on the other side, on the business side of the foundation. And I love that much to probably the team chagrin because I was a vocal board member, very active. And then I was leaving HBO, long story long, they asked me to consult, I said yes. And then that turned into, he got an offer he couldn't refuse, which will happen to you in your own career because I am manifesting it for you. And he had to leave. And he said, I have about a month mm, or so, give or take, to get you ready. And the rest is history. I initially said no to the opportunity. I was crazy. What was I thinking? And then I quickly got with it. I fell in love with the team. I fell in love with those of you who look like me. And here we are. The rest is history. So now I've been in the role since 2020. And I love it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. And I want to introduce you to my team. You won't see them all this evening, but Anel and I, as I mentioned before, we're tag teaming, but we alone don't make the magic happen at the foundation. So I at least needed you to put your eyes on who makes the magic happen with the team, because while we are small, we are mighty. And so this is what you see. These are the folks that make the magic happen behind the scene, business development, talent acquisition, dean of students, managers of social. We get all of it done for students like you who are in the fold with us. And so tonight, the goal is to encourage you to see things through our lens and really, quite frankly, find yourself in the room with us, right? That's tonight's goal, to share with you about the organization. And so I'm going to, hey, that's what I'm talking about. This is the Emma Bowen. We stand on her shoulders. It is because of her and others in the community like Dr. Parker and Dan Burke, who basically said, listen, we're not seeing enough Brown and y'all know, well, maybe y'all don't know. I say Brown universally for all students of color. So if you identify as such, I'm talking to you. They didn't see us in front of the camera and they didn't see us behind the camera or not to the tune of the numbers that we were capable of producing. And so she and others through their activism decided to get in the faces, oh, I like saying it that way. They got in the faces of the C-suite leaders in these organizations, the broadcasting networks, and lo and behold, the organization was called different initially, 
but it right-sized itself by us calling it after the woman who led the charge. So without her fortitude and her ability to stay in the conversation when it had to have been challenging, and we're going back to the 70s and the 80s because we were founded in 1989. So it's 35 years of us being in this game. We know a little something about bridge building and we always honor Emma any opportunity we can because without her, I would not be here. And so we honor her by sharing her with you and you need to know what she looks like. You need to know her story. Thank you, Crystal. All right, let's talk about it. I know you all don't know what you don't know, but we do. And part of why I chose to stay at the foundation through COVID, the two pandemics, racism and COVID, I opted to stay in, in part, because of the language I'm about to share with you that's on the screen. We operate from a family first centric position. <laughs> what does that mean? Your family is first, literally your blood family, right? And anyone that you've opted in to be family, we at the foundation believe in family values. We acknowledge that we are the family that we created, but we always put our families first because that's how it should be. We are not carrying cancer in the building. And we sometimes have to bring some humor and approach things from a lighter perspective with everything going on in the world these days, especially around DEI. And we are an EBF forever team. I mean, I can show you better than I can tell you. We've got alums who continue to come back and give of themselves. I, as a board member, came back and now this is like my lot in life and I love it. And so EBF forever is just You'll see we're a little bit like a gang. We're a little bit like the mafia. Once you're in, you're in. There's no getting out. But why would you want to? We are a warm environment. We actually like each other. We don't always get along because that is human and that is human nature. But we actually like each other. And on a small team, believe it or not, that matters. Networking and mentorship is key for us. We preach it to our students and to our alums. It is how you will continue to grow your network and how you will find your opportunities oftentimes without having to pick up the phone to go in for a formal interview early in your career, you will. But as you figure out your path, networking and mentorship sit side by side. Pride and EBF legacy, well, I don't have to really reinforce that because I just told y'all all about Emma and why we're here. Trust, like, and respect, you will learn. Those three things are key and necessary when in a working relationship, whether it be with colleagues or with your immediate manager. And if you just think about trust, like, and respect in your own home, where we first learn how to negotiate our needs versus our wants, you will understand the importance of trust, like, and respect. And in an optimal situation, you have all three. We believe in those values at the foundation. Work hard and play harder because that's how we roll. I talked about the alumni. I see you, Crystal. We are funny because I said we are funny and we are relationship driven because that is how we get the work done. Trust the process, right? Trust the process. It will take care of you. And now, thank you, Crystal. I got it all out. <laughs> 35 years of EBF. I'm just going to give it to you straight, no chaser, by the numbers. Internships, we've had more than 2,000 interns placed in the history of our 35 years. Alumni and friends community are more than 5,500. So that's inclusive of our alums and the network that continues to give. We tap into the network's network because there's strength in numbers. Our reach, about 40,000 are the folks that we are interfacing with on a regular basis when we talk about our community. That is the community that we can track and trace. Our events, believe it or not, and, and I just need to make note of this, for this year, we produced 30 events and speaking opportunities. Now, I know I just showed you all that the team is small yet mighty. Look at what we do for you. This is the audience that we cater to. And last but not least, and I don't know that anyone can, you know, thumb up at this fact, but we've given out more than 6 million in scholarships to students since 2012. So we walk the talk, right? We are about our business and you need to know that because you're also assessing if we're a fit for you, this is not one-sided. 
Next slide, please. Just to give you a flavor of who is in the mix with us. Some of these partners have been with us since the very beginning and others continue to come in because it is incumbent upon us to be thoughtful about what are the interests of the students that we're serving? Where do they want to be? What are they interested in pursuing? And then it's up to us, as I noted earlier, because we're bridge builders, it's our job to reinforce and to really grow these relationships. So just to shout out a few, you know I'm gonna start with my alma mater, Warner Brothers Discovery. We have Lionsgate and the NFL out front, Fox television stations, I mean, TVB, Cox, A&E, like, I mean, they're all here. And this is just a few, right? Just, just to whet your appetite and give you a flavor of who's in the tent. Next slide. Okay, here it is. In purple is where we have a foothold, right? Think about the states, think about the makeup, the demographics. This is where we do really well. And we are very honest with ourselves about where there's room for improvement. So in the gray is where we're often challenged. Doesn't mean that it can't happen. It just means it's a little harder for obvious reasons to be able to find opportunities that are befitting for our students. So if you know of folks, because right, you have relationships, we have relationships. If you know of folks that are living in the gray, we can meet you halfway, Let's figure that out. So there's room for improvement for us to eventually have this entire map reflect the fabulous color purple, you know, because that's for royalty. I'm an Aquarius and that's that's my color. <laughs> that's not the reason why this is purple. That's just me being funny, which is what I said we are on the team. Next slide. Okay. This is an overview because my colleague Anel is about to get into it all, but just to give you a flavor of where she's going to take you, we have a fellows program and that is our bread and butter. That is why you are here. You are hopefully interested in what opportunities can we provide undergraduate students, preferably rising sophomores through seniors, although there's always the exception to be made. And then we have our launch career activation program, which is very specific and unique to college seniors. It is a boot camp feel. It has a boot camp feel. You're going to find yourself with others in a quick learning, bite-sized snacks. We try to give it all to you in the spirit of setting you up for success, knowing on the other side of graduation is the workforce and transitioning from hmm, student to employee, it comes with its pros and cons. And so we try to prepare our community for that. Alumni, an all multicultural media professionals network, affectionately known as AMP. This is where we cater. I mentioned maybe a little earlier, we have a colleague who represents the West Coast, shout out for Chicago, Naina, who is also an alum, and she manages this process for us. And she's awesome with giving advice and counseling with folks who are entry level right on through to executive professionals. And there is a mentorship piece to this, right? Because we talked about the importance of mentorship. Last but not least, we have our newer program, our early career leadership program. And this is for our high performers and high potentials who are already in the workforce, who maybe things aren't moving quick enough by way of a promotion. I know cash is king, but you know, when that belt gets tight, we're not always able to give, having spoken for the other side of the business, having lived at HBO for so long. So we thought it was only right that for zero to five and beyond, but that is our sweet spot, how do we ensure that they're engaged and retained by the very partners who are already in the fold with us? One hand washes the other, membership has its privileges. And to this, I will now introduce my colleague, Anel, who is also an alum of the program. Anel, bring her out, bring her out, bring her out, bring her. Hey, hi, Anel. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Anel Disla. I'm the Partner Relations and Talent Acquisition Manager here at EBF. Um, I'm actually also an alum of the program. So I was a part of the foundation as a fellow and I graduated in 2012. I interned four summers with NBC6 in Miami. And um, 
I was actually hired right after. So I worked there for a total of about 11 years and or almost 12 years. And then I worked at another one of our partners, actually, Hearst Television, for three years. So I did work in the industry for about 15 years before joining the team. So it's very full circle. Um, but today I'm here to talk to you about the fellows program. So our goal is to connect students of color with multi-year paid internships at our partner companies. And as Nikki already mentioned earlier, in our 35 year history, about 2000 fellows have gone through our program, receiving support guidance and resources from EBF. Um, some of the roles we hire for, there's, there's a ton of roles that we hire for. Um, it extends beyond traditional roles, like when you think of media and entertainment. So I just wanted to go through some of those. And some of our fellows that we've recruited for in the past, they've been in computer science, finance, operations and strategy, uh, ad sales and media planning, DEI, PR communications, data analytics and research. And then of course we have the more commonly known roles in media. So producers, production, sports broadcasting, creative services, and many other roles. Some of the benefits that our students receive beyond the internship, every EBF fellow can apply to receive a 2000 up to $2,000 scholarship every year that they're in the program. Um, many fellows are able to attend the conference that we have um, in New York. And that's usually all expenses paid. We also have a virtual portion of the conference for those who don't attend in person. We have a year round virtual professional development webinars and workshops that we work on. Nikki also mentioned this earlier, we had more than 30 just this year alone. And our students have access to everyone on the EBF staff. So most students are always in communication with Clarabelle because she is our Dean of Student Affairs, but you know, whether it's through text, email, phone calls, students, you know, ask about anything from like academic guidance to just personal struggles that might might be affecting their grades. <clears throat> so I just wanted to uh, mention two of our previous fellows that they kind of put their little testimonials here. Um, basically, Ashan. <laughs> Ashan was a fellow at her television stations. Um, he had a great experience with us. And then um, Sydney, in the next slide, she interned at Warner Brothers Discovery. Um, so some of the benefits continued. Of course, our fellows have access to each other while they're in, our, in the program. Um, but you also have lifelong access to a community of more than 2,000 fellows and, of course, the AMP network. Um, I know from personal experience that alums stay connected for many, many years beyond their internship and lend each other support for both personal and professional matters. You'll, it's, it's honestly, it's truly a community that comes together. And Nikki already mentioned launch. Um, launch is, like she said, basically a boot camp <laughs> and it's for seniors it helps you prepare you know as you start the application process to get into you know your first job after college and the mentorship com mentorship component is probably the most popular component of the program just because you know you get to tap into someone who is already experiencing what you're hoping to experience and they really you know provide guidance Um, so applying to the program, there are two main steps. First, you have to submit the online application form. When you're filling out the application, you're going to have to submit your resume and your LinkedIn profile link. So just be aware of that before you start filling it out. Um, after you submit your online application, you'll receive an email with a link to complete a higher view interview. That interview is important because it gives us more insight beyond what's on your resume and allows us to learn more about, about your goals and what, where you actually want to be. Um, it's also a great way to practice interviewing because some of our partners actually do require video interviews as well when you're going through the process. Next slide, Crystal, thank you. Um, some tips um, after you submit your application. You need to keep an eye on your email and phone communications 
I know that there are a lot of spam calls these days, especially <laughs> this political season. And we all tend to ignore unknown numbers, but you need to remember that you might receive phone calls from either us or our partners if you're selected to move forward in the process. Um, also make sure that your voicemail is set up. Some people just never set it up, but if we need to leave a message, we need to have a way to do that. Um, and keep in mind that if you use do not disturb, which I am guilty of myself, uh, your phone might not alert you when you have a missed call. So you might wanna consider going to your settings and just changing your silent mode to not vibrate instead of using do not disturb. Um, you also need to make sure to respond and complete any next steps within a timely manner. Different partners have different deadlines, so you need to make sure that you respond as soon as you're able to. Always show up and present your best self, whether it's through email, by phone, or in person. If for whatever reason you are no longer available during the process, just make sure to still respond and update anyone you may be in contact with in a professional manner because TV is very small and it's a small industry and you just never know when you will cross paths with someone again, or even if you wanna reach out to them for something else in the future. Uh, make sure to come prepared. You need to do your research about the company or organization you're in contact with. Make sure to ask questions because it's just another way to convey your interest in an opportunity or a company. And last but not least, your career is a marathon, not a sprint. I know that when I was in college, I didn't want to graduate quote unquote late. So um, if I, so I did, I would have gotten a double major if I had just stayed one more se semester. But now I think back, I wonder like, what was the rush? There's no rush. Make sure to slow down, take your time and find the opportunity that's right for you. Um, with that, I'm going to go toss it back to Nikki, our president CEO. Thank you, Anel. Thank you. Well, we have a treat for you. I know I said a little earlier, the alums in our organization, they really are the gifts that keep on giving. I tell partners and funders when and where I can, they're walking billboards for the organization. And we talk about leveraging our network. They're already on the other side of hopefully where you're going. So they've already had this opportunity. They've already gone through their rites of passage. And now they're on the other side to talk a bit about their journey. Now, I'm not going to keep you here all night because I think, you know, you see there's a theme here. We love what we do. We take time to curate these experiences because this is really who we are at our core. So when I introduce these alums that really they're going to introduce themselves, we're about to have a fireside chat. And in doing so, I want you to think about their experiences, what they didn't know that they didn't know when they were where you are currently, and feel free to ask questions. I'm sure my team has already been asking you questions in the chat. Feel free to receive the information, have questions, have it in the chat, and literally use your fingers as your voice because as I said earlier, you're assessing if this is a right opportunity for you, if we're fit for you. So please take advantage of this evening, especially with these next few guests. So I'm going to ask if my fireside chat folks will come on out. Daniel, Kai, and I know we're having some technical difficulties because that's just what technology does. It's a gift and a curse. You can't really predict. But we have our lovely Adriana, who is not able to be visible, but her heart and her spirit is here, and you'll hear that when you hear her voice. And so with that, we're going to jump right in. Thank you, alums, for being here. You know how I feel. Um, I don't have to really tell you that I acknowledge there are other places that you could have been just like these students, um, but y'all actually have full-time jobs. And whether you're remote, you're hybrid, or you're actually in the office, I just appreciate that you're here with us. And if I could take you back to a time that you were in these very seats when maybe you were having the informational. And I don't know if all that was in person at the time or if you were receiving like, I'm dating myself and not you all, old school like 
an envelope and a stamp, which my 11 year old knows nothing about. But I have a feeling that you all are a little closer to the generation that is in the living room with us. So if you don't mind, Neha, I would love for you to share what years you were an EBF fellow and what was your partner company? And then Daniel, if you wouldn't mind, right after Neha, that would be great. So I'm gonna set it up by doing a look back so you all can tell a little bit about what that experience was. And then we're gonna do a flash forward where you can tell us about what you're currently doing in the role that you're in today. And then we'll get into all of the experiences. So Neha. Yeah, hi, I'm Neha. Um, I was on the tech track as an EBF fellow. And my first summer as a fellow was in 2022. So that was after my sophomore year of college. And I, my partner company was Warner Bros Discovery. And um, in 2022, I was a software engineer intern at Warner Bros Discovery, or I guess it was Warner Media at the time. Um, and then the next summer in 2023, I returned as an intern again. Um, but this time around, I was a data analytics intern. And fast forward to now, I'm still with Warner Bros Discovery, but I guess we'll get into that um, when we go to the fast forward. Oh, thank you. Daniel? Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Sandoval. Um, I did my, my summer intern in 2022 with Fox Broadcast, Broadcasting KTTV, the Fox affiliate here in LA. And fa and the current role that I'm currently in right now is uh, at Sales Associate here at Paramount. So, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. All right now, Kai. Hi, um, my name is Kyron, but I go by Kai. Uh, I was a fellow in the summer of 2022 as well. Um, my partner company was Hearst Television, and so I was assigned to their news station back in my hometown, New Orleans. Um, yeah, and then I was going to be a fellow again, summer 20. No, I was a fellow summer 2021. Sorry. Okay, yes. Then I was going to be a fellow again the summer of 2022, but actually one of our partner companies hired me. So I went straight to the workforce. Which is the goal. So I like a little tease and reveal. Adriana. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. Um, so my name is Adriana Arias. I um, was, I work, was in EBF um, 2023, summer of 2023. And then I I was a marketing intern, and then I extended my marketing internship through the fall, and then got hired um, in the winter. So, yeah, so employed. We're gonna stay with you, Ariana, Adriana, because I like that you just highlighted kind of the tease and reveal for a few others on the panel as well. Can you say a little bit about the transition? right? Because you're clearly still with your, what would have been your partner company is now where you are full time. Can you say a little bit about what your day is like? Um, so currently, well, like what my role is currently, you mean? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I started as a marketing intern and then I extended, but I'm now a sales coordinator. So I am in our partner company, Outfront Media, and they so um, billboards and all that advertising like space. So if you see like a board that says out front or like if you live in New York and you see like the subway ads, it, they all say out front. So they sell ad space to like companies. So I work with like contracting um, and figuring out like how to put the media to the like actual spaces and just making sure everything goes live and presenting it to the company. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's a cool assignment. And I know exactly what you're talking about living in New York, where it feels like every other block, there's a billboard and clearly yeah. you see who owns it. And so lucrative business. Um, if you don't mind, Kai, can you share a bit about how you transition? Because I think part of the goal here, just being mindful of our audience, they don't know what they don't know. And so there's this opportunity where you're, you've been a fellow slash intern, and then you transition into full time. What made you want to stay 
in that same setting? What what was it about your experience as an intern that influenced you? Yeah. Um, so for me, a big thing was that the summer of my fellowship, the um, vice president of HR <laughs> is on the board <laughs> at Emma Bowen. Um, her name is Catherine. And oh my God, I love that lady. Um, but anyway, so Catherine just really made sure that all fellows had a great summer at her. So she kind of just made sure she was available for anyone that summer. And then at my actual station, they really welcomed me very nicely. They made sure like I got the best out of them. And then, with, I mean, I talked to other people who work for different companies that we do not partner with and they just didn't have a great summer like I did. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm with a great company. Um, and I just kind of stayed in contact with everyone at EBF. Um, I stayed in contact with everyone at the station I was at. I stayed in contact with Catherine. Just, I just realized the platform EBF gave me. And as I was doing that job search, I realized that being a part of that company I was already with was where I wanted to be. And so I just kind of stayed that same route and reached out when I saw an opportunity. It was so funny because when I saw my job opening, I like emailed her. I was like, should I apply? I mean, I don't graduate for another like few months. And she was like, yes, apply, put it in. And, you know, the rest is history. Um, it's just all how I was treated that made me want to be a part of the company. So. And if I could guess how you were treated didn't begin for you the minute you expressed an interest in applying. It was from the minute you got there as a fellow and could get a sense of the culture of the company how you were treated even as a fellow before you even knew that you would set your sights on wanting to be there full time. Right. I think that's awesome that, yes, shout out to our chair of the board, right? Because we don't have bobbleheads on our board. We have real people who care about what we're doing and look to see that they're influencing the bottom line. So I get a sense of pride when I hear someone say, hey, I had a good experience and I'm still with where I had my summer experience, I'm there now full time. That's not how it always works out, but I appreciate when it does. And so for just a moment, Daniel, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to move on over to Neha because I wanna hear your story and then I'm gonna come right on back to you, Daniel, because you're the outlier. We're gonna get underneath that. Neha. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about my story. Um, I think being on the tech track specifically, I think it's a bit a bit more unique role within entertainment. I feel like some people are really interested. And for me, I always wanted to work in entertainment, but on the technology side. So something that really stuck out to me about my partner company is they were very um, receptive with allowing me to try different areas within technology. Um, like I started out as a software engineer intern and then I moved into analytics and now I'm a data scientist. And um, they really listened to me and um, worked with me to allow me to try everything I was passionate about. And the people, like Kai said, really made it for me. Um, everyone was super welcoming. And I really felt myself learning a lot while I was there, which was what I was looking for, um, and yeah. Now I think you know, and I, and you know, that's where I'm going to transition over to Daniel. But before I let you go, Neha, how many of your peers, if you even remember, right? If you can call out, not an exact number, did most of them that you had a relationship with stay with their partner company, or did they end up pursuing other opportunities? From what you remember. Um, yeah, I think within my peers at Warner Rose Discovery, um, if the opportunity arise for them to stay, I don't know many people who didn't take the opportunity. <laughs> um, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I think I want our community to know that while it's ideal for you to stay with your partner company and the idea that they've extended these resources to you, what I love about what I just heard from Neha is that they were open to her exploring and they were giving her access to different parts of the business, which depending on the partner company, even that doesn't necessarily have to align in that way. Sometimes people want you to stay and have a full experience in one area. Maybe you're seeing different parts of the business, but for you, I appreciate that you were actually encouraged to explore different parts of the business. And then I like where you ultimately netted out was somewhere even different than that. 
So that's really how you're learning the business. So thank you for your story, Daniel. Share with us the distinction for you, given your transition away from your partner company and a little bit as to the why. Um, yeah. So, so I want to track back. Um, I was actually um, intern in 2021 um, for Fox Broadcasting. A little bit for them, I, it was like freshly out. Like we're still in the pandemic area, stuff and like that and everything like that. So the office over there was pretty empty. But there's still a few people here and there. But I, um, first day I was there, the HR people, the great people over there, and the news director, his name is Peter Wilgren. I can't can I forget him. He's such an awesome guy. And he's like, you know what, since you're already here, um, if you just follow health protocols, would you want to come every day? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, Because I, I came in thinking it was virtual, but if he came in person, that was great. And another thing about that as well is like um, for that internship for Fox 11, Fox, KTTV, they're so nice and so everyone's so nice well, when i brought up i was an mfo and intern their their face little like oh do you guys bring the great the best interns you guys get paid and like the other interns well you know it's all great you get experiences and everything right and it was a really it was a rotational thing so i got to touch every side of the business from it from hr believe it or not because they just showed me like oh this is how we do things yada 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 from the news right from the dot com side from ad sales from sports from everything so it was great and i was in 2021 i'd did not come back for 2022 because that was my graduating year. I think I, I got in a little late. It was my junior year for that internship. So 2022 came around. I graduated. And um, it just, like, you know, we all have struggles of, like, trying to get a job after college. So I think that was my thing. Like, I had a full-time job, but not within entertainment at all. It was in government. And that was my just job throughout college. And I became full-time there while still looking for work. But with the great people I've met, in different industries and in different organizations, EBF being one of them, I came across um, the role I have now or met people within my company, Paramount. And then I learned more about the ad sales associate role. I did the interview process. I talked about my experience. I talked about Emma Bowen Foundation, how I was a part of it and that lit up one of the eyes of the interviewees. And she was like, oh, okay, I know about that yet. Yeah. And and that's where I'm now currently working in ad sales in the digital side of Paramount. I used to, I was and the linear side a little bit as well, some convergent. And a little bit of that role is like we well, I work on the back end of working with my account managers and account executives. They get deals done. It could be like simply as Coca-Cola. They want to do some advertising in some of our in Paramount Plus or in MTV or Comedy Central. They get that. Then I work on the on the back end of the thing, the deal, maintain, I mean maintaining the deal working with the clients, you know, things of that nature. But yeah, that's a little bit of, of my story. Did you jump right into deal making or was there like a learning curve for you? Uh, I'm not particularly into deal making, but I'm in, with my account managers and account executives learning that side of the business. Yeah, It's important to learn as we want to grow my career of how each client is different, uh, their, what offerings we give and see if that's the best fit for them. So um, I, get, I, get, I get to like be in those those rooms and discussions not i'm because I'm, I'm not doing the dealings but i get to see it getting done and just yes. exciting so it's a great business yes i love it i love that they're even giving you a window into what happens in the room uh so often we just wonder or we're like peering in like a kid in a candy store but they're actually preparing you and if i had to guess but i don't want to assume anything for our audience are you vocal about your aspirations or are you quiet about what you want um quiet or vocal that's a good one i think with my with, with my close ones i might be a little a little boisterous but in the overall grand scheme of things i'm quiet but i should be more <laughs> loud with it yes you should daniel and i tell our students all the time closed mouths don't get fed so you are your biggest advocate i just i love the journey of what you've been exposed to in just a short period of time mm -hmm. i don't want to lose sight around shout out to all of you that it's not lost on me or I'm sure the students in our living room that you were doing this while in COVID, right? And so there's an element of having to figure out some of this remote, having to stay motivated from afar. Do you think that had an impact on your assignment? Uh, me in particular, they're my assignment. Like it, it was um, just, I got, the great thing is I got to work in person. Yeah. And also you have to do health, and health this, the distance and everything, but mm -hmm. I don't think it kind of deterred me because I got the opportunity to work in person. But 
um, for people who work remote, um, from people that I've learned, it was it was difficult. It was difficult because you don't get to that you don't get to that human interaction. You don't make those connections as authentically as you want. Yeah. But for yeah. me personally, um, I, I didn't have too much of an issue. I appreciate that. Um, you know, you don't get to ear hustle when you're not in the office, and whether you're in a cubicle or you're next to someone who's in a cubicle. So much of your learning that's not formal happens just by ear hustling. So I appreciate that you were actually in person while we were in COVID because I know there were a few who were remote and or at least had a hybrid experience. Um, okay, so Kai, I'm coming over to you and Adriana, prepare because then I'm coming your way right after. Can you talk to us a bit about... In what ways do you think EBF in particular, tangible ways, you feel we prepared you for the environment that you're in right now? And, and I know that's a very broad question. If you can think of two things that you know, ooh, I'm so glad dot, dot, dot happened. Oh my God, I feel like there's so many. Uh, <laughs> um, it's so funny, My always my go-to when people just ask me about like the importance of EBF and how to treat me. I think about when I first got the phone call from Clarabelle that I was offered a, a kind of like, I was being moved along in the fellowship process. Um, she talked, we talked about like uh, how like she was very impressed with my high review um, and my application. And you know, she was just saying like, the only thing that she goes was very questionable was like my grades. Um, and I felt like she was, although they're not where we want them to be, you know, we're still going to trust in you, but this is like, where like, this is what you need to do. And so th just to have that conversation on what, what to prioritize, because I think I was like a junior, it was COVID. So like, you know, grades wasn't, they weren't at the top of the mind. <laughs> um, and so just having that conversation, it's just like different things, just like being supportive. Cause I know like to this day, like so many people, like, I can call like, Nikki, Everett, uh, Michael, anyone at any time when I need something. Um, I think it's just just knowing like you, these people support you. They have states away that you've only met like in person, maybe once or twice. Um, I, it's just like the whole thing, the feeling that I know there's a whole a group of people that cares. I'm like you mentioned, strong and mighty. Like I get a lot done. <laughs> I love to hear you say it. I know it, but it's one thing to hear it elsewhere. And I appreciate what you said because, you know, I don't even know that our, our community in the living room knows that we host a conference for you all, right? That we do three days. I know in, back in the day, it was all in person. I think we had to get creative with this group right here around figuring out the virtual options because not having a conference wasn't an option. So we had to figure it out. Uh, and so I appreciate what you shared about your takeaway, your experiences with us, because I do think part of our goal is not just to see you all placed in opportunities, but to ensure that we're preparing you to thrive in said environment, not just showing up and being like, yes, I work for Warner Brothers Discovery or I'm over here working for Paramount. It's like, I have a real assignment. I take it seriously. And to your point, I have somewhere to go when I have challenges, when things may not be going as well, Conflict exists even for interns, right? Like things happen. You have to have a safe space to retreat to. And so it I feel like a peacock, proud mama moment that you would even talk about Clarabelle in this way because she cracks that whip on us. She gives us feedback on the team. So I appreciate when I hear that the impact that you know even now that you can pick up the phone and call us because that's part of the, why I often say we're a little bit like the mafia right? Because there's this element of once you're in, you're in, and it's a lifelong community. Uh, and so thank you, Kai. All right, now, Adriana, I want to hear for you. How did we help you navigate? What did you, what was your takeaway from your experiences with us so that we can really make this textured for the students in the living room? Hello, again. Um, I would say that EBF helped me navigate, obviously, the application process when it came to like applying to the internships, but also I would say like the conference, the big conference that we have in the summer um, I attended and I felt like it was a really amazing opportunity to like network and put yourself forward. And now in my job being in media sales, I have to like be with clients and like go to dinners and just network on a consistent basis. 
So I just feel like it gave me kind of like, it dipped, I dipped my toes in the water when it came to like networking and being present and speaking with people that are in the same industry and having, knowing how to like make an impression and how to circle back and just say like, hey, like it was nice speaking to you. Like, let's do this and this. Um, so yeah, I think EBF did a great job with like pushing us all forward in a, in, in a good direction. I love it because, you know, I hate that we call what we're really referring to here as soft skills because they're really the hard skills. Everyone doesn't have EQ. Everyone can't manage conflict. We don't always know how to effectively communicate. And I do mean in our first voice and in our second voice, the voice that we're comfortable with when we're in communities that look like us, we're often not finding that in the workforce, which means we have to figure out how do we want to show up? And I'm not dare suggesting that we suffer from imposter syndrome, even though I know that's so real. And we do. I think anytime we're in a new role and you're just trying to figure out where you fit in in that, you're trying to navigate. And so I appreciate your answer. Neha, humor us, because given what you do, what credentials were necessary? Educational certificates, degrees? Did you have to have certain, like, tell us a little bit about background, given your current role, did you have to have special requirements outside of your degree? Yeah, I could talk a little bit about that. So Thanks. going into college, I actually had never coded, touched computer science at all. But um, in my first two years of college, I had taken some basic um, coding classes and kind of got my foundation there. And for context, I studied data science and economics at UC Berkeley. So that was my educational background that I was going into my roles with. And, you know, when I was presented the opportunity to apply for the software engineering role, I honestly, if it were me on my own, I probably wouldn't have applied to it on my own, but the, because I didn't think I had the credentials, but the Emma Bowen Foundation really pushed me to kind of go out of my comfort zone a little bit and take a chance on myself. And so the interview process there, there was a technical portion. So I had to code live with the person who ended up being my manager for that role. And also there was the higher view that everyone else had talked about. So those are kind of the two portions of the interview process that I had to go through. Other than my degree, I had done some like passion projects on the side, but in terms of certifications, there was nothing else I did personally. I think if you're interested in it, definitely go for it, but I personally did not. Oh, I so appreciate this. Do you have a sponsor where you are? And you know what, before I even go there, Neha, let me, let me qualify that with, just a little brief explanation. Okay, living room, right? Because you all are our cousins in this moment. What I will tell you is a mentor is someone who knows you. They have a personal interest in you. They're invested in you. It's mutual insofar as the love. It's someone who clearly already cares about you, the person, and now they're invested in your career and they're giving you guidance and they're counseling you along the way. A sponsor is someone who oftentimes is well more senior than you. They're in rooms you don't have access to with people who may not know who you are or your work product, but your sponsor, which you may not always know is your sponsor, is in that very room talking you up, talking about your work product, talking about what a good person you are, the relationships that you have, that you have this work ethic because they're giving other people what your hallway reputation is even if you haven't sanctioned it, the goal of a sponsor is to be able to put you on the map in ways that you may not be able to do for yourself. So I'm going to pause there. <laughs> Neha, do you have a sponsor where you are? Yeah, I think I didn't realize that I had a sponsor um, until I returned full time. And I was talking to this person and they had informed me that when they were deciding where to place me um, for my full-time role, I had been very vocal to this person who was actually my second manager. Um, and 
he really vouched for me saying that, oh, Neha is really interested in being a data scientist. We should place her in that role. And honestly, if it wasn't for him, I would probably not be where I am today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the importance of having a sponsor. And I'm going to tell you the same thing that I told Daniel. You all have earned your keep. You've been consistently consistent. You have earned the right to advance. Close mouths, don't get fed. You better be your biggest champion. And when we can't be, because we just got a lot going on, when you have a sponsor, they're doing it for you. They're banging on those drums for you and telling you, yes, you can, even when you're like, no, I can't. They're like, yes, you can. And it's like, you're the only thing getting in your own way. So I love that you all are being honest about not, you know, sometimes we show up in these spaces and we're like, I was perfect. I did everything right. Look at me. And it's like, you know, sometimes I think we learn when we're not a hundred percent feeling confident and we're not feeling like we got this and that happens too. And it's just another hurdle to get over. Um, and so I'm going to come around to, I'm coming on over to you, Kai. What do you do for mental health? wellness while you're in this environment? Could you even speak to what are some of the things you used to do when you were a fellow? And it could be that it's a line because it's a passion for you or it's a hobby. But we recognize in this current political climate, and then there's the organization's culture that needs to be managed. I often say C-suite sets the culture, but your immediate manager sets the climate for what you feel on the ground, which could be very different than what a senior leader is telling you and what they're experiencing because they're in an ivory tower. What are some of the things you did to keep your head about you because you also were experiencing this while in COVID? Yeah, um, so I feel like, like my like mental relief hasn't changed. I don't know what about it. Just sit me outside with a, on a sunny day with an acai bowl <laughs> and then like that just changes my whole mood like I don't know why um, it's been like that since I was in college uh, besides from that it's really like me time I think especially when you start out in like whatever industry you know it's hard time to say no um, but I realized talking to different people just like even if they work in my like field or not if you feel hesitant about it then it's like then that's a no it's straight up like I don't I'm not even thinking about it. Um, it took me, I'm not even gonna lie, probably like a year and a half into my career before I started saying like, I don't know. But it's also just like how you say it. I don't be like, no, I just be like, we could talk about this. But I think just for me, it's just like really putting myself first. And I think sometimes it, depending on your industry, it may like feel like you're being selfish, but you're just kind of respecting your boundaries. Um, and I, with all due respect, I don't think like some people realize like that's okay to set your boundaries. Um, and so that's just me. I choose me, I would say. <laughs> and I am giving you all the snaps because selfish is self-care. And we need to tell ourselves, we need to walk our way out of the hole. You're being selfish. That's you taking care of you. And as I learned from one of my good girlfriends, who's the CEO of the number one marketing advertising agency in the world, no is a full sentence, period. N O period. I don't have to say anything else. However, you've got to earn the right to get there. And I'm not so sure when we're so early in our career, right? Like we get to say thank you, but no, thank you. Sometimes we say yes to things and then we have to take care of ourselves and self-soothe and know all the ways to talk ourselves off the ledge. So I love that you called it me time and that you were selfish and that, you know, you're supposed to be right. Because that's part of making sure that you insulate yourself. So Thank you for your honesty. All right, you all know I could keep going. No one has sent me a ping yet, but I'm going to be so respectful of those in our audience. I have all the questions in case they do not, but I'm just going to throw out there, Ope, Crystal, I know you're in the background. I've got my phone ready. Okay, oh, see, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Oh, look, I was already on it, Crystal. Okay, we're transitioning <laughs> into Q&A. I want to thank you all. I'm going to open this up. I think, Crystal, you're going to let me know. Okay, hold on, guys. Let me just read the note. I think we can transition into Q&A. Oh, yes, maybe 10, 15. Okay, we got a little like seven to 10 minutes that we're working with here. Okay, I'm going to see if there are questions out in the audience for you all. 
because I can appreciate the timing and I'd like to think I exhausted all the questions. Okay, I don't see anything in here just yet from Ope. Okay, I'm keeping my eye on it. I am going to, is there any advice? This is going to be how we round this off. Is there any advice that you would give the you that is sitting in these seats in our living room for this fireside chat? Think back to the you who is brand new. You didn't know what you didn't know. What advice do you have for these young scholars who are with us this evening? And Neha, let's start with you. Yeah, I think I mentioned uh, briefly before, but I think the two main pieces of advice I wish I had known or I would give to myself when I first started out is one, to not underestimate myself and to take the chances that may make me uncomfortable or scare me because you never know how they're gonna turn out. And usually they do turn out better than you expect. Um, and then the second thing would just be to be your biggest advocate because if you don't advocate for yourself loudly, other people won't know that you need to be advocated for. And um, I think that is probably the biggest thing, yeah. Spot on. Thank you very much, Daniel. Yeah, I would say uh, to Nehemiah's point as well. Um, well, you have to like to be when you get started in industry or any entry level job or intern or whatever, just to be yourself and project that yourself. Like, do your work to be the best you can. But I feel like most teams they gravitate towards the person and who you are. Not the work is great. A lot of stuff can get taught with work, but being a great fit to the team, being saying hi, be in an elevator or whatever, just being yourself can take you a long way. And like to never be afraid to ask questions. And there's people like if we, if you guys get into EBF, there's an endless amount of support here and just know you're never alone. And that is a fact, you are never alone. And I appreciate you saying it. All right, Kai, come on through. Um, I would kind of agree with Daniel and Neha um, I feel like I'm in a college study session. I agree with you too. Uh, <laughs> a little forum. Um, but yeah, I would have to agree with them. Uh, just for me, I just kind of think back. It was like, I would say the whole process for me, I was so busy trying to focus on like me looking polished, I guess, but didn't realize that like these hiring managers, they realize you're just getting out of school. They want to see just the hustle and the willingness to grow and learn. And I was super busy trying to feel like I already had it done. So I think that's what I would talk to myself about, just really pushing to show that I'm a learner and I have the ability to grow rather than I got it all together. You better bring it. I'm so identify with that. And I appreciate, again, the honesty, right? Like we couldn't have planned these answers. They're based off of the experience that you had. So thank you for that, Kai. All right, now, Adriana, you bringing up the rear. What do you have to share with our living room this evening? Yeah, so I guess as advice, I would just say in any internship that you guys have moving forward, that just take any chance you can to like really absorb any and all information that they give you, whether that's like talking to a person in a different field that you are in. In my marketing um, internship, I talked to graphic designers, had like hour conversations with them just to pick their brain. And then ending my internship, I asked to extend um, on my own like regard. I just wanted to keep the, the relationship going. So yeah, I think taking all chances um, and not being afraid of like rejection because they could have said no, but I put myself out there and um, now I'm here. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate that you all were here with us this evening. I am going to release you because I recognize some of you are at work. You actually have meetings to go to and you're going to run a little late because of us. And you just let them know EBF needed your time and your talent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will wrap up with our audience and I'm gonna bring out Anel and hopefully you all won't go too far. And to the extent that we do something like this again, you already know we're picking up the phone and calling you. So thank you alums because you always answer the call for us. And I appreciate you being here with us this evening. Have a good one. All right. 
our fabulous alums. I know they have to go back to the office. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now Q&A. Now let me just be clear. I think we are having some technical difficulties on the back end around how we see your questions in the chat. So you're just giving us a beat to kind of work through that. And in the meantime, Anel, welcome back. <laughs> thank you, Nikki. <laughs> I love when we have you all front and center to talk about your experiences because, I mean, I could make it up. I was an intern too, but I wasn't an Emma. And I think there's something special about when you all come back into community to just share your experiences because I really do believe it influences in ways that I could speak to it, but I don't know that it would land in the same way. And I think you would agree. I, you know, it's it's funny because a lot of times like people don't really realize like the difference there is between like being an EBF intern versus just a regular intern because people do look at you different. And I remember like even when I was, and I'm, mind you, I started my internship in 2008, so it's been a while, but I remember like people would be like, oh, this is Anel, she's our Emma Bowen phone. And everyone would just be like, oh, okay. Okay, we got this. Like, and there was almost like this level of trust that I was like, what did I do to deserve this? And you know what? And now I love you saying it because the truth is, it's 35 years of us doing this work. So what that says is there's been such a good relationship. We've got such a good foundation with our partner companies that when you say you're an Emma, they can't help but light up because there are patterns and themes. Let me get in my HR mode. There are patterns and themes. And when it comes to Emma's, it makes a difference. So I appreciate you saying that. And I do think there's a special juge, as I said earlier. Okay, clearly the team got it popping because I'm getting all the questions in. So and now I'm going to turn it over to the audience and I'm going to, oh, oh. Okay, so the questions are coming in. Oh, here we go. We do have advice for an applicant. And I guess you and I are going to do what the panel might have done. So we'll we'll try to gauge some of these pending the question. So here's the first one out the gate. If I am an advertising and marketing communications major and have been working on film production outside of school, can I still apply to the production placement? Yeah, of course. I, we love to see like, you know, students that are even like taking the time. A lot of times, okay, let me restart. So a lot of times students don't realize that on their resume, they can put extracurricular activities or things they're just doing on their own that show that you are committed to, you know, whatever it is that your internship role that you want to be in is. So like, even if you're just working on your own passion projects that aren't affiliated either like with your school or, you know, an, an organization, put that on your resume. If you have a link to examples of things you've worked on, put it on your resume. There's no reason why you wouldn't be able to apply. In fact, that just makes you stand out more. That's right. We like all the experience, right? All of it adds up and helps to tell a story. And I think it shows just how committed someone is to their craft that they're doing all this extracurricular work outside of school. So agreed. What advice could you give to an applicant who's looking to do a career transition as a senior in college? For instance, I studied communications all through college and now I wanna focus on tech. So I don't think I can speak exactly to communications to tech. However, I will say that a lot of people transition, you don't stick to what you studied in college. And in fact, a lot of students or fellows that have gone through this program, their major had nothing to do with what their internship was. So like, there's a lot of fellows who are just, they just have a, a different interest. And what they do is that in school, they'll study almost like what they like, but they'll actually get their hands-on training during their internship. So even if like, for example, I know that there's a lot of students that studied political science, but they wanted to work in a newsroom. Yes, that makes sense to some extent, but you're not learning anything about working in a newsroom if you're studying political science. So that's just one example of like, you know, that I can personally think. Um, and I, complimentary to you, would offer advice to this person, which is, I agree with Anel. You're still in school. There are people who transition from one ladder to the other. Is my ladder up against the right wall? I thought it was, but it's not. I want to move it over here. As long as you have cross-transferable skills, and whoever asked that question, I want you to write that down. 
cross transferable skills. Think about the baseline of what you needed to even show up with a career in communications and how you'll leverage the things that you have learned, the experiences that you have had, the classes that you have taken. How do you leverage that into tech? So think about what those skills are by way of being organized, by way of EQ, by being thoughtful about the community that you're in. You're going from communications, which means you had to pay attention to your audience just as much as you had to be thoughtful about your tone and your delivery. So I actually think there are back to those soft skills that you acquired on the communication side that I would argue and say, just by virtue of the field, there are certain skills and natural ways we lean in to disciplines. Some folks on the tech side may not be as personable. They may not necessarily show up with all the softer skills in tow, right? It's like thinkers and feelers, introverts and extroverts. Where do you get your energy from? It is okay to be all the things that you are, and it's also okay to flex. So just start thinking of the things that you learn that you're like, hold on, I learned that on the communication side, but guess what? On the tech side, I still need to apply these very skills. The rest you will figure out with the experience that you garner over the next few years. So please don't put any added pressure on yourself. Nikki, you just made me think of something too. Don't think that because let's say that when you graduate, you get a job in communications, there's tech and communication. So don't think you're you're going to be stuck in whatever your first role is. I myself started in the newsroom. I did not want to be in the newsroom, <laughs> but I was very vocal about the fact that I wanted to work in creative services slash their, the marketing department in a local news station. And six months later, a role opened up and I switched over. And those are two very different departments. So <laughs> don't think that you'll be stuck with whatever your first role is. And practical advice, go talk to the folks who are doing the work that you think you want to do, right? As you have your summer experiences, whether it's with us or another organization, we don't discriminate. We just want you to develop and grow as you go. So wherever that is, pick the brains of the people that you know do the work you even think you want to, and they'll help you craft your narrative for the transition, right? So just work smarter and not harder. Okay, next up. I graduated in 2022. I'm a lifelong learner with 20 years of experience, even though I returned to school after 20 years. Is there a different path for more seasoned adults, but who are newly graduated? Hmm, that's a <laughs> difficult one. Um, I think that, you know, it, I think I need, like, it's almost like I need more information. Like, I, I'd like to know, like, if this person already has a job and what they wanted to do, if they haven't found a role, because I think those are two very different answers. Um, if you have not, or, or go ahead, Nikki. No, I was just going to add that I love that this person is even having a season of, you know, I'm, I'm doing something different. And what do we do for seasoned adults who are newly graduated? While our program absolutely focuses on undergrads and every now and again, we'll get a request for a graduate student, I would say we still have a network that you might leverage because as we just discussed, we know a lot of folks at companies. So depending on what your interests are, where you're now leaning relative to where you've been. So I'm with Anel. I actually have more questions than I do answers, but off the rip, I would say, I actually think this is real and that this is a narrative that's important and that you take the time to explore and maybe offline, since you know about, you found out about this opportunity, we can connect with you offline and maybe connect you to our network because you do have a different background and you are well more seasoned. And I think there are opportunities out there and maybe we can help connect the dots around that with you. If you have not already, sign up for the AMP network. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, we got a little something for everybody, right? Like, it may not necessarily be for our bread and butter program, but we can figure out other ways to support you because that's what we do. Okay. What does EBF look for in most applicants? Do you focus more on the candidate's experience or aspirations or their story? And since everyone's story is different and there are so many applicants, what helps one stand out? Oh, Anel, I know you know this because you lived it. Yeah. Um, I love this question because there's so many different ways to answer it. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, 
if you have the experience and it's on your, you can have all the experience and it could be on your resume, but then you might go into your higher view and then you just seem like disinterested or like, you know, like you just like, you're just going through the motions, then you're less likely to stand out, even though you have all of like the skills on paper. Um, then maybe you don't have any of the skills on paper, but you do the higher view and you just talk about things that you've done out in the community or ways that you, why you want to do this. Like, what is it that drove you to have a passion for whatever the role is that you're interested in? That could help a lot. Like if your higher view, you know, really you stand out and it shows your passion, it doesn't matter if you don't have all the experience. I mean, interns can't have all the experience. The whole point for of an internship is for you to learn the job. So I think that, you know, it just kind of depends. You really need to like show who you are and make sure that comes across. The higher view component is super important for that. And obviously if we call you too, like make sure that, you know, you are in a position where, or I'll tell you this, like sometimes we'll call someone, but they're comp they're like busy. Either they're driving or, you know, they're they're just not prepared for it. Like it's okay to say, oh, can we like talk later? So that you can like prepare yourself for it. Don't just like, you know, say yes to everything when you know it might affect because like if we don't know that you're doing something and you're just not in the right headspace to like have this conversation it might not come across it might just come across like you don't really care so as long as you show your passion i think that that's the biggest thing you can do i think you answered that perfectly and then this is i love this one so just work with me here thank you all for being here you're welcome what tips would you recommend to add authenticity, personality during the application and interview process? You kind of answered that. And P.S., why I really wanted to read this one, it's her birthday. And she's so glad that she could be here with us on her birthday. And I don't know that I'm going to say your name right, girlfriend, but work with me. Jaylene Baez. I'm going to think I said it right. That sounds right. Sure you'll put in the note if I did or not. Happy birthday, girlfriend. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How you answered that prior question applies to her as well. Well, not only that, Nikki, but like the fact that she's on her birthday on this call says a lot. That's a perfect example. So it shows that she's committed and she's about handling her business, even though she could be doing ooh all the other things mm -hmm. on her birthday. And she's in college. Forget about it. I know what I would be doing. So thank you, girlfriend, for being here with us. And happy birthday again. OK, I think I'm going to give you a little bit of an answer, right? Because I can't help myself. When you say what tips, authenticity, personality, I don't think people practice before they go on to do the video. And I recognize it's nerve wracking. There's the written part of the application. And then there's, as Anel spoke to, the video. And the video can be nerve wracking. Sweaty palms, butterflies in your stomach. You want to do well. Like, we know all the feelings. We know all the things. Go into your bathroom. Get in the mirror and practice what you want to say, you know who you are. You may even want to ask people who are close to you, what are my best attributes? Why do you like being with me? Why are we friends? Why, right? Like, because we assume sometimes that we know why people hang out with us or why they choose to seek us out of the crowd. Don't assume, ask the people close to you, do a little soft query around what is it about you? And then incorporate that because sometimes you have to hear language that's not in your head. And sometimes your friends and the people who know you well can help you get out of your own way. Not that you're in your own way, but they can give you the language that then you can say, yeah, I am those things. And you build your confidence in the mirror. I know this is corny, but if I have singers, my daughter is a singer. She's in vocal lessons. The things that the vocal coach has her doing to stretch like A-E-I-O-U, get comfortable because if you're comfortable, even just in the bathroom mirror, going to come through in the video. So when you talk about authenticity and personality, smile. Really think you're talking to someone while you're on that video. I know it's crazy, but it will help you. The more you practice, it's a muscle. The more you use it, the better you'll be at it. Oh, and by the way, go on interviews with organizations you have no desire to work for. Mm -hmm. That's like a trick for me. I went on like 50 some odd interviews when I left financial industry before getting to HBO. And I did that because I needed practice. I needed to get comfortable. And I didn't want to read from a resume because it's my life. It's my experience. So go out on interviews that you could care less how it works. 
great way to practice. Okay. Nikki, you actually, you always have a way of making me think of something that happened to me. So really quick, when I actually interviewed for the fellowship at the partner company, I went in in person. I was a nervous wreck. I totally bombed it. Like there were two questions I remember that that the HR director at the time asked. And I, I just like had this blank stare. And I remember like coming out of it thinking there's no way that I am getting this. Like this is, that was horrible. Like I don't, and the thing is too, like we recognize like maybe you don't have any interviewing experience. Um, so what did I do? Because I was like, there's no, like I failed so badly. Um, to turn it around, I basically just like emailed the HR director after the fact, thanking her. And then the two questions that I didn't answer, I went back and answered in that email. And I was like, look, I know that I didn't do too well, but I really gave it some thought. And this is what, you know, my answers would have or should have been. And then on top of that, I also had done like this, um, th there was like a, something that that station was doing with, with I mean, I applied in high school with the high school that I was in and I sent her like this little certificate they gave me. So that apparently turned it all around years later. She was like, honestly, if you hadn't sent that email, you were not going to be selected. <laughs> so okay. um, you went the extra mile, Anel. You recognize mm, your EQ, self-aware. You're like, oh, I don't think that went very well. But mm -hmm. then you found a way to come right back. So that idea that while you could have been down and feeling like, oh, I missed that opportunity, I'm bummed. Instead, you were like, hold on a minute, how do I turn this around so that I can actually show them that I'm committed and that while that was a lesson learned, I learned it quickly and look, I'm already back in your face again. So, oh, <laughs> I get so reflective of your personality and I love it. And I'm glad that you shared that story. Oh my God, I know I should have remembered that for you because anytime you tell that story, I'm like, that's real. And you know what else? I don't know. I know Crystal somewhere like wrap it up, Nikki, but I get into this mode, especially with you. And now I think there's an element of some of our fellows who are now alums applied three, four, five times over before they actually got into the program. Nothing to be ashamed of. They're all learning moments, teachable moments. And you learn something about yourself when rejected. And I know we don't like that word, but we have to embrace it because it's part of learning and it's part of the experience. So it's okay if it doesn't happen on the first go round. We have a narrative with some of our alums who are killing it and are rock stars. And it took two and three times over before it actually happened. So come on into the fold. Okay. Here's the last one. Oh no, that was the that was the last one. Thank you, Ope. That was it. And I don't think there's anything else. So let me find out. Okay, it is 7.23. <laughs> we ran over just a little. <laughs> it's such good information. And I just want to thank you, Anel, because it's fun partnering with you. And I'll just do a little Nikki thing, which is I took notes while our panelists were speaking. And I just want to do a quick recap, really quick. Do not underestimate yourselves. Be your biggest advocate, no matter what happens with us, wherever you go, wherever life takes you, take these lessons with you. Be open to exploring, right? Give access, get access, give of yourself and be vulnerable. You are the calling card because you've got Emma, right? For the Emmas who could say that was part of their calling card, hopefully that becomes your experience because that's deep. To be able to say you're a part of this community and what it means on the outside. We know what it means on the inside. Hustle, hustle, hustle hard. We, the staff, are accessible. Be honest with yourself and with others. And be present, right? I, I thought that was beautifully said. Be present and make an impression and take a chance on yourself. And that, that is who we are at the Emma Bowen Foundation. <laughs> this is how we roll. It's family. It's intimate. It's personal. And we care. And so once you're in with us, you're in for life. And I hope that tonight we were able to influence you if you were on the fence, that you heard something that pulled you in. Or conversely, you may have decided this is lovely. <laughs> it's just not for me right now. And that's okay, too. Thank you all for being here with us. Shout out to the EBF team for holding it down with whatever could be going on behind the scenes. This was lovely. And Anel, thank you again. And thank you, Nikki. We're, we're going to do this again, I'm sure. And so if you all would like to come back, come back on in the fold. And if you have any questions or concerns, find us.
Because we're accessible. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for showing up. <laughs> Bye, y'all.